Okay, it's Wednesday, that means it's Trump Week. And I'm Jay Fidel, this is Think Tech, and today we have two of our, uh, our hosts who join us. We have Stephanie Dalton, and we have Winston Welch, both hosts of other shows on Think Tech. And we're gonna talk about Trump Week this, this morning. Let me say that uh, we're, also, we're also designing a, uh, a jingle uh, about Trump Week, and we'll be rolling that out soon. Uh, we don't know exactly what the words of music are, but it will sound like Gilbert and Sullivan, I assure you. Uh, good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Jay. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Looking forward to the conversation. And Winston, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing? Let's go through what's happened this week. I mean, it's been a, I suppose, I suppose if I had to pick the, you know, the top down news, it would be uh, Trump's missteps on coronavirus. Um, and uh, and his remarkable egotistical narcissistic statements about it, which were written up in uh, today's paper, the New York Times, uh, an opinion piece. So uh, can we talk about that? Who wants to go first? Stephanie, you go first. What do you think about Trump and the coronavirus? How is he comporting himself on that critical, deadly issue? Well, I feel that he's not living up to his uh, proclaimed genetic heritage. He has his MIT scientific uncle who has degrees from on these topics and um he's drawing on that knowledge base Ge and we'd like to see more genetic. of that yeah genetic <laughs> knowledge like to hear much more about about that and of it and apply and how he's going to apply it so yeah. um hopefully things are improving somewhat given we are moving the the test kits out the diagnostic kits but what still is amazing to me is that don't we have like 260 million people in the country and they're delayed over the delivery of a million kits throughout the country so maybe i don't myself know enough about how the testing goes on but perhaps there's a sample and it's not a whole population effort but it seems like we're still woefully behind the curve of the virus. So in a larger context, uh, Winston, um, you know, what, what has he been telling us? I mean, the role of the president in a time of unmitigated crisis, unmit uh, is, you heard it here, unmitigated crisis uh, is a very special role. What is that role and is he living up to it? Well, uh, you know, I, I, um, I did love an opinion piece in the New York Times that says who's, which side is the administration on based on every uh, public appearance we've seen. Um, it's not the public's. And when you're concerned about getting reelected, when you're concerned about massaging numbers, when you're concerned about keeping people in line, when they really need to be telling the truth, this is not the hallmark of a free society. This is not the hallmark of a, of a well-run government. I, I was appalled to see, um, I think it was the CDC director last week when they were having a news conference. And he said the first things out of his mouth were, I just want to thank the president for his excellent leadership on this issue and some, something to that effect. And I thought, you don't need to be a sycophant right now. You need to step up and let the American people know what steps do they need to take to protect themselves, the, their families, their, their businesses, their um, environments. So for me, it's everybody that's, that's connected with this administration gets tainted and corrupted and um, and there's a there certainly are good people in our government that are that are there and saying i'm going to try and make a difference as long as they can and then they either succumb or get kicked out or cross him i, I saw today that the the fellow from the, the head of the cdc said uh, actually it is a problem and uh the no it was that the wall shouldn't uh will not keep out the virus so he's directly con uh, contradicted the president so i wonder how long he'll have a job but um uh yeah i think it's it's scary when you have people making policy decisions to please the leader rather than to serve the people. That's been happening for three years, but, but query, Stephanie, um, you know, what are the stakes here? Uh, you know, the point is that if you have missteps and if you fail to do things that you should do, and if you spend all the time patting yourself on the back rather than saving lives, then lives are lost. Um, and I, my, my own view is that he has cost a lot of people their lives already 
by not taking steps he should have been taking, by not focusing. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I see it as a huge irony. I think that all of his efforts to contain or distract or deflect are ending up increasing the effects of, of or the, the downside of having this virus in our world now. So in every way that he's hold, held back on getting those kits out, if indeed he was involved in that, I'm not sure. I can't understand that our CDC in Atlanta with the world's top scientists and medical researchers could not have seen that they needed to count from the get-go on this uh, virus's appearance. Um, they surely would have been almost um, unable to control their need to start counting and data collection uh, for the virus, even while it was still in China. So I don't quite understand why they have been so low profile in all of this. You know, Winston, there was an article in, the, I think, the Washington Post about the, the, the process uh, that took place in the state of Washington uh, and that uh, care home uh, in Washington. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and the people who reported on it laid, laid it squarely um, on the CDC for telling the, the medical authorities in Washington that they could not rely on uh, um, data they had, uh, they had accumulated um, prior to a CDC approval of the laboratory, the laboratory process or something along those lines. Uh, it was so gross. And as a result, in a time where every day means lives, um, the state of Washington lost two, three weeks waiting on the federal government. You, you, you hear about that? Well, it seems like our whole country has lost probably two or three weeks and we had a chance. I mean, China's been, this first thing came out at the end of December and we can see the trajectory and they've really, you know, um, They've had their share of mistakes, and I don't know that that we can trust all the news coming out there, or even if we do, that it's correct news. But uh, we can see patterns. We could look at Singapore, or we could look at Taiwan, and they they responded very differently to to this threat and said, "We're going to be in front of this. We're going to uh, try and contain it as best as we can." It's harder in our country, granted, but when you don't have leadership from the top that when you don't have the, the preparedness, uh, the, the pandemic preparedness force that was dismantled by this um, administration, you really don't, your, your processes aren't in place. So these kits should have, this, as soon as they knew about what these kits were, they should have started manufacturing them en masse and distributing them everywhere. And I realize our guidelines were something like, oh, have you traveled overseas and this sort of thing. But the reality is if you were starting to present with things and maybe they were concerned about people flooding the offices, but, um, they, uh, we, there's still a chance that we can, um, they're not talking containment anymore in a lot of places, but in some places they might be able to, to still have some containment. But uh, these kits, from what I understand, are not as readily available as it's being um, made out to be. Well, that's true. Not even in Hawaii. Uh, so, so you can't test the poll population. You don't know how many cases you have. Uh, you don't know who's uh, infecting who, whom. Um, and as a result, you have more deaths coming down the pike. And, and my question to you, Stephanie, is do you think the people in the red states, do you think the base understands this? Or are they still buying into what he's saying about, uh, you know, his uh, a, a, a genetic knowledge? Uh, you know, it's a great concern to the country that lives are being and will be lost increasingly. And, ir it, you know, it's irremediable. It's, it, the, the thing is out of control and Trump is responsible for it. You think this will reach the base and do you think it will have an effect on the election? It's a, it's a great concern and the, the trust that people have placed in, in this uh, leader is uh, not in their best interest. So how long will it take them to get back to the fake news where there's actually some unfake important information that will help them save their lives? and the lives of their families. I, I think it, it's all coming to a head at this point. So right. as I've heard that this might be the Trump Katrina uh, because of these misleading statements and misinformation and 
things that are not helpful but and even, actually did. But even if it is a, a, that, that you're, you got to think that uh, it says New York Times reported that Reuters that the Democrats were twice as likely to view this as an imminent threat as Republicans. So we're getting very different news sources here and it will be spun in such a way that this is uh, some sort of liberal liberal plot, right? It already has been against the administration when in fact this is not, it's not a plot. It's just trying to keep folks safe and when you have people getting news from such uh, sources it's no wonder that they're distorted and and doing uh, as I said the, the time says doing the president's bidding in rather than containing the virus making this some sort of um, hoax as it were so I, I I you know you have to think of where has this virus been hitting hard recently it's been hitting hard in Boston in, um, in California in Washington these are states that um, arguably, maybe um, they're not on the favorite list, and so the response might not have been as as hard as if it were in Texas or um, you know Florida or uh, or Michigan or some other states where um, it might have elicited a stronger response. And I don't like to think that way, but what's happened is that you mentioned trust, Stephanie, is that the trust in our institutions is going down daily when we realize this is all these. Uh, all of these have become politicized when it's just basic science. But when you have a re, uh, an administration that doesn't believe in science, that puts Mike Pence in charge of this response, where his last um, response to an epidemic in his own state as governor was disastrous. Uh, there's not a lot of hope in something like that. So maybe we will see some experts stepping up um, and, and taking over and just Hopefully, we can say that the administration will just step aside and let the experts do their work um, unfettered. I don't have a lot of confidence in that, but I am hoping that it does happen. I was just going to point know, out that Stephanie, the, you know, the other side of this is a priorities issue. Um, you know, when Trump <clears throat> saw that the uh, stock market had, uh, you know, essentially crashed, um, he decided he was going to spend his time and effort uh, trying to get the stock market to rebound and uh, to try to help the economy uh, more specifically help help uh, you know the business side of the economy uh, rather than any other side and and so um, you know he was taking or recommending steps uh, that were not necessarily uh, intended to help people survive to help beat back the virus um, but to um, you know return the economy to normal is that the right priority is well, that defendable it's a uh his tactic, so it's that, um, and then with the the ships that wanted some help. I mean, he just wants to keep the numbers down, so he just wants the surface features to be controlled under get control of the surface features, so that he can continue his messages, which are dead, very deadly in in how they mislead um, those who are going to listen to that and not check other other sources. So I don't see that his tactics, or if it's strategy, uh, uh, it is, is working for him anymore. It's all coming around, turning around the irony, uh, as I said earlier, of, of what he's tried so hard to do to keep it contained. Yeah, in a way. Lowering the coming rediscount back. rate, it strikes me as um, something that assumes that the health side of this will all be fine in a few months, that it's going to go away. What we really need to do is focus on the economy. You, you agree with that, Winston? Well, the economy is obviously going to be, uh, I can't think of any other word than uh, devastated, at least seriously negatively impacted. They were, I saw the paper today said 10% down, but I also read that United, I think it was United or Delta reported like 70% off of their web booking. So we're in a state that's so dependent on tourism, I can't imagine that it's only going to be a 10% hit in our economy here. And, and that's going to reverberate across, you know, everywhere unless you're uh, Netflix or Amazon or uh, Costco then you're um, sitting very pretty right now but uh, a lot of people a lot of pain a lot of hurt so whatever this administration purports that it can do for um, the everyday man and woman uh, out there whether it's a payroll tax cut or whether it's some sort of um, direct to consumer uh, you know Tom 
uh, this is not Tom Steyer, Andrew Yang uh, sort of uh, payout because these people don't have health care. So what choice are you going to uh, make? Are you going to self-quarantine for two weeks because someone that was at the banquet where you were serving got sick or are you not going to say anything and just report to your other job? Um, you know, these are hard choices that people have to make. They have to pay their rent. They have to buy food. And when you don't have a job and you don't have, or you may not have health care, um, or if you've been working minimum wage, like 40% of the people in the state of Hawaii, this is a very serious issue. And if they, if they are the, the pro-business, pro-consumer um, administration, more power to them. I just would like to see a very hefty lift here. And as I say, there's, there's no libertarians in, the, uh, in pandemics because uh, everybody really wants a government response because it's, it's really the only thing that can uh, meaningfully affect uh, the entire outcome of everything. We got to continue to follow this and we'll follow it perhaps some more at uh, 12 o'clock noon when we do uh, our Corona Watch program and uh, go further on these issues. But let's uh, let's talk about other things that have happened this week. I mean, for example, I mean, it's not nearly as important as coronavirus, but um, Trump cut a deal with uh, the Taliban in, in Afghanistan without including the, Af the Afghan uh, government. Um, and now that seems to be unraveling, but maybe not. Uh, Stephanie, what do you know about this and what can we say about the Afghan, quote, peace agreement, end quote? Well, the Afghan peace agreement is um, troubled and um, there's um, issues of uh, prisoner release and agreements that they made to, in order to work on it more and um, there's not cooperation from some parties. But one of the uh, big issues that's come out it has to do with um, the International Criminal Court um, that has authorized investigation uh, in, into the um, problems that have evidently been there and have avoided investigation. And these are the um, alleged war crimes that have been committed by U.S. military people and CIA and also the Taliban. And uh, in addition to the ICC or International Crim Criminal Courts um, authorization for this investigation to go forward, an appeals court has also ruled in favor of, of opening an investigation. And this has been very infuriating for, and that's quote unquote infuriating for the Secretary of State and the administration since they've been deterring this uh, opening of an investigation for a long time. And um, um, obviously, if we could get out of there fast, maybe we could avoid what this uh, investigation might reveal. But it looks like there's some forces at work now to get down to finding out what, what does it mean and um, are there indictments and is, is there due diligence yeah. on this? Like everything else, uh, the Middle East is in a, a transformation. And for example, uh, you know, people treat Iran as, well, one of the most powerful nations in the area. We dump on them all the time. Uh, we, we break our peace agreements with them and all that. Um, but they're sick and uh, their people are very unhappy. And uh, in fact, uh, some of the a number of the, uh, the senior managers, senior officials of Iran are sick with coronavirus. This has an effect on, on the country, the political will and so forth. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, this uh, Taliban agreement is, seems to be unraveling, although I read this morning that the government of Afghanistan had agreed to respect the release of prisoners, which was part of the agreement. So Winston, I mean, how is the Middle East doing now in light of uh, Trump's mismanagement of, the, of these various relationships? It, it's hard to know where to start with a lot of things. So Syria was a, a complete disaster and will continue to be. And now as we're seeing, uh, Turkey's just saying, yeah, we're letting folks right through to Europe. There's gonna be a lot of repercussions with that. With Afghanistan, you know, um, I have maintained that if he could extricate us from that war in a meaningful way uh, and, and bring some sort of peace to that land where our forces are not put at risk anymore, maybe they leave in some uh, Delta forces or something, I don't know. But uh, if he can accomplish that, I'm going to give him kudos for that. If, if he can pull us out of that, that is something that has not happened in all the, 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 the past many, many years of everybody else there, I think they probably realize nothing's going to happen that's going to advance well, is this. is it happening? I mean, you say if it would happen, everybody would be happy for the peace of it. 
But is it happening? It doesn't seem to me that it's happening. I don't, you know, that it's such a mess over there that we'll find out uh, in about six months or a year. I mean, more scary is th those countries with no resources in Pakistan right no next door. Wait till the coronavirus really hits there. Then uh, they won't be really so worried about um, who's shooting who as just staying indoors and um, not touching everybody and everything. Uh, it, it's going to be real interesting to see when it spreads there because it, it, it inevitably will. Well, what about uh, the understandings um, or of the agreement about what's going to happen after we're gone? I mean, is that like hands off if the U.S. pulls out? And then we're right back to the same situation that that conceived the 9-11 situation. So I, I think is our responsibility or obligation to fix whatever caused that or what were factors in, in that occurrence. Have we met the criteria for solving or fixing that? I don't see any larger plan. Oh, well, let's get out, let's get out. But then what have we accomplished by getting out? Right. And and especially when we have to come right back in safe. again. It's, yeah, it's keep the old safe. story. Mm -hmm. It's true, but mm -hmm. there's. A, it, let's not pretend that there's not going to be American intelligence and um, uh, missiles that can be remotely fired from um, Florida when certain intelligence is, is received. There's uh, America's not retreating in a meaningful way. I think from the world stage, it looks like it in in, in certain circumstances, but. There's too many vested interests too for that to happen. So I, I don't really see that happening, but maybe as far as more um, troops on the ground type of thing, it seems like everybody's agreed. Let's uh, let's pull that back for now. That would be my guess. But, um, okay, I mean, almost everybody. Almost everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about back at home. You know, we, we had the uh, Mueller report which uh, uh, went nowhere. And here on Trump week, we predicted it would go nowhere. We predicted that at the early part of it. Um, and, you know, and then we had, of course, the impeachment, um, you know, all about uh, Russian manipulation and all that. And it uh, looks like Putin is going to be uh, the president for life in Russia. This is not good news. Uh, and then, um, you know, we have now uh, Mr. Barr, uh, who was the worst attorney general in the history of the United States, uh, is involved as, uh, as Trump's uh, stooge in investigating um, uh, Joe Biden. And of course, that's because Joe Biden is the front runner. Um, and uh, that investigation is proceeding. And apparently uh, they, they can do that, even though they, they, they froze out the Democrats on the impeachment investigation. So um, what do you think of that? I mean, where does that fit in terms of Trump's popularity and in terms of um, you know the election, I suppose? Stephanie? Well, I... I wanted to um, share my feeling about that, which is the American public has exonerated the Bidens, as far as I can see. And I thought that is what, or at least the Democrats that are in, the, in, the, in this uh, primary, right? They have exonerated Biden, so that bringing back that whole investigative business isn't going to make a dent in anybody's intention to vote in the election. So I think that um, things have changed on that front. I, I think that that precocious, precociousness or prescience on Trump's part that he saw Biden as his greatest threat is interesting. So now he's going to have to face him. And I think this major um, tool that he had lever to get him out of the way is not going to work anymore. Of course, we have the rest of the people um, that are listening to the leader instead of the news. But anyway, so we'll, we'll see. Even no matter that there is more investigation, where can they go? It's kind of like Hillary, yeah. the, the Hillary Clinton and Benghazi. How much more are you going to be well, able I mean, to find uh, out? Don't you think, Winston, it's the height of audacity to claim that you've been exonerated uh, by two investigations now uh, and then investigate the guy who you know, uh, was exonerated? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this exactly plays to Donald Trump's fans, and they're his fans. They're his people. Um, they are his fans. They're his fan base, and they're fanatics uh, about him. When they hear this, it's it's red meat to them. They truly believe that this is um, the right thing to do. And let's face it, Joe Biden's son and the the Trump children, they probably wouldn't have gotten where they were if it weren't for their 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 parents so you can see some sort of stink that goes all the way around that said 
it, it, the stink is a lot less on one side, as far as I can tell. One person is sane and not a megalomaniac who's not doesn't have the best interests of our nation at heart. He has his own best interests at heart, and um, I want to, I you know, I, I want to think well about all people, and I do. Um, hope that the president makes the right decisions right now for in so many areas and just says it is not about me I am the president I'm already the highest person in the world so now that I have this let me use this as a platform for good rather than um, self aggrandizement I've been saying that since before he was elected but I my, my hopes have not been realized just yet he has not uh, you know ascended to a higher plane maybe a lower one there's always hope and we can um, we can uh, we can hope for that and we can um, like Nancy Pelosi says sends our prayers um, and pray for the, the president but you know also keep our our feet moving like the Quakers say pray and move your feet so that we're we're making contingency plan we have alternate structures we're working to keep up our um, our democracy our freedoms our um, well our, on, our that, on that notion Winston now, one of the things we predicted here on Trump week is that between the exoneration in the Senate and the election Trump was going to attack the press. Um, and indeed, he is attacking the press. Most recently, uh, there was a story uh, multiply reported in multiple uh, publications about how he wanted to uh, pull the license, the broadcasting license of MSNBC, because he doesn't like them. Um, and of course, his uh, affair with uh, Fox News is, is um, you know, disgusting on a First Amendment basis. Uh, and finally, he sued the New York Times and he sued the Washington Post for defamation. Because they claimed, uh, that, you know, that uh, that he that they, that state he claimed that statements were uh, made that uh, he um, had had uh, in, in encouraged Russia to manipulate in our election, which is, seems to me is proven true anyway. Um, but what what we have here is a is a, the beginning of a, a six or eight month attack on the press. Um, where does that go? Uh, this is very troubling, don't you think? It's it's been going on for for since the before this uh, before the election ever uh, four years ago. So I just see it accelerating, and it is very troubling because if you can sue and get a newspaper to go out of business, um, you know, hopefully you'd have other people pop up. But when it's uh, when that's your doors are shut down because of a lawsuit, and when you're um, when the courts are being increasingly we'll call it stacked with with people friendly to your views. Um, and they view that press as an enemy of the state, um, then, you know, what do you do with enemies? Well, you, 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 then that gives you a free path to lying all day, which is what we're seeing. Stephanie? I was just going to say quickly that uh, he has had no consequences to date, and uh, enormous gargantuan um, efforts have been made to give him consequences, and until he has some of those, nothing is going to change. However, if these numbers keep going, and uh, he might get consequences from Mother Nature, and he may get consequences from people that finally wake up and won't go to the rallies. So he can show up at the rally and there'll be nobody there. <laughs> so there's a consequence. So I think that uh, consequences are gonna be on their way. And of course, the big consequence could be um, in November. And yeah. where we do what the impeachment process said was supposed to be done, the American people decide. This is a, a critical thinking question for the whole country, including including the base. Uh, Stephanie Dalton, Winston Wells, thank you mu so much for joining us on Trump Week. We'll see you shortly for Corona Watch. Thanks so much. Aloha. <laughs>